tourists welcome. Well, since we're welcome, That's not a very nice word. It's a very old building. The suitcase full of clothes. It's almost like somebody's been living here. Wow, look at this. USMA prep. 1973. Somebody really didn't want any hunting going on in the store. Wow. This is incredible. An absolutely incredible building.
Now this is really interesting. A little spooky. Wonder who made these. Somebody was living here. It may have been an artist. Well, not in the traditional sense, but I meant like they like to make art. That, that is an old piano. Wow. All right, into the murder basement we go. Ooh. These stairs are made of concrete. That was a bat. It's so quiet here. Ooh, there's a lot of bats. I don't mean to disturb you, my little bat boys. Actually, I think it's just that one bat. Oh gosh, he almost flew right into me. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you, little guy. So it doesn't look to be much down here. Other than Brad, the bratty brat. Well, Brad, the bratty bat, I will leave you alone now so you can go ahead and uh, go back to doing whatever it is you were doing down here I am fairly certain that someone was living here though This building does have an upstairs, but as you can see, it is impossible to get to it. I didn't bring my rope and grappling hook with me, so there'd be no way for us to get up there. The train's coming. In 1902, the Aero Route Railroad that connected El Paso and Santa Rosa had finished construction. Along the railway were wells owned by the Duran brothers. These wells would provide water for nearby ranchers and of course the railway workers. By 1921, the railway had moved on to Carrizozo. However, Duran would still be an important supply point for ranchers. In the 1930s, the US 54 highway was built right through the heart of Duran, 
which would boost its population for a short time. However, that wouldn't last, as the I-25 would be built only a few decades later. Although Duran still boasts a small population, there are several abandoned buildings in the area. The abandoned two-story building was a dry goods, seed, grocer, and furniture store. It also doubled as a hotel. It was owned by a man named Ronton J. Curry, who lived there with his wife, Rafa, and their three children. They stayed on the second story, in the hotel. Their peaceful life would soon be uprooted. In September of 1921, five men would rob the store. Mr. Corey tried to fight back, but was shot and killed. His wife was severely wounded. Mr. Corey's son, Freddy, began to throw tin cans at the robbers, pestering them until they ran away. Four of the five men were apprehended, however one was never found. It's believed that he escaped to Mexico. On July 22nd of 1922, three of the four men would be hung until dead. When asked for their final words, one of the men said something that was unrecorded and another said nothing. The final man, Isordo Miranda, was quoted to have said, In New Mexico, there is no justice for the poor man. He is led like a helpless lamb through the courts and to his punishment. This is an injustice you are now doing. Sheriff John Block then led the men to the gallows, and the crowd watched as life slipped from their eyes. On April 6th of 1923, the fourth man would be hung. However, this story may be factually inaccurate and comes from a not as reliable source. But there was a robbery and the men who committed it were executed. The town's general store was operated by William Hindy and opened in 1908. There were and still are many ranchers in the area around Duran. Although many of the buildings were built in the early 20th century, they seem to have been abandoned sometime in the late 70s or early 80s. It's a very ominous house. Well, it didn't collapse in on me, so... That padlock didn't do them much good.
Wow. An incredible little abode. I feel like every time I step, this place is getting closer to just falling in on itself. Indeed, I can see on this. Just says May 31st, but it doesn't give a year. Well, it's time to go look at the neighbor's house. Oh, mattress and a suitcase right at the front door. That's interesting. Ooh, there's a little spider here. I don't want to disturb him. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Get around the little guy. Step over the little guy. Very carefully. Step over the little guy. There we go. This place is a mess. Look at that though. Now that. That is fascinating. Very old stereo system. The speaker is gone though. Ooh, is that a picture album? Okay. Wow, look at this. Must have been the people who lived here. Wow, this is incredible. This is really incredible. Oh my gosh. Look at that. This 
pictures must be really, really old. 90s maybe. Wonder who they were. Seems to be the end of the album. Don't seem to be any information about who they were in here. Yeah, I don't see any indication of who they were. Well, I don't want to disturb their picture album anymore. Wow, that is incredible. This must have been their home. Wonder for how many years. Wonder who they were and where they are now. Address four. Interesting. Well, I don't know if you're aware of this, sir, but there's a hole in your house. It's a nice carpet. This whole town just gives a lot of 70s vibes. this wow oh they have a second fridge and a freezer I don't know when this house was built, but it definitely was lived in in the 70s. There's a burb. Oh, there's a little burb. Adorable little guy, aren't you? Whoa, don't fly directly at me, guy. Just friggin' hit my leg. Well, my thigh. Oh yeah, this was definitely a 70s home. Whoever lived here was certainly religious. There's a TV. Wow. Incredible vintage TV. 
What an incredible place. You don't see that engine right there? Where? Right there, in the middle. That right there? Yeah. It's transmission. Well, I mean, it's part of the engine. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. See, I know about cars. You see right there, hanging up on the wall? That's the turbine that makes the car go. Yeah? Yeah. It's an extra hearse purse. Yeah. And right down there, that blue thing, that's a shock absorber. It's time to go. <laughs>